If you notice in our objective today, we've changed to compound inequalities, and compound inequalities are inequalities formed by joining two inequalities using the word and or the word or. Let's take a look first at some and inequalities. I kind of tend to think of these as like, they remind me of old school weights that weightlifters would weigh, would lift. There's a circle at one end and a circle at the other and a line in between. Kind of looks like weights in a weight room. Uh, this is my first inequality, x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 5. And this is how we're going to show it on our graph. Let's do the x is greater than 2 part first. And we're going to circle our 2. It's an open circle and it goes to the right. Our next is x is less than or equal to 5. So let's do 3, 4, 5, 6. It's less than or equal to 5, so we're going to circle 5, fill it in, and it goes to the left. That's two separate inequalities. But down here, we're going to make it a compound inequality, just like compound words, when you've got two words that go together. And this is combined by an and. And you're going to see in a minute why I'm talking about this reminding me of it, because these graphs always end up looking like that. If we're going to combine both of these, we have to have both 2 and 5 represented on this graph. So let's make our graph be a little bit tighter here. I'm going to replicate this one. Hi, Ms. Alden. And it's going to circle and go to the right. But we're not going to pass the 5 because with the compounds, it's only the space in the middle and the 5 being included here. When we look at or inequalities, they do the opposite. Uh, we're going to do y is less than or equal to negative 2, or y is greater than 1. And we're going to do this part of it first. We need to have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. It's less than or equal to negative 2, so we're going to circle this and go to the left. And y is greater than 1, so let's do 0, 1, 2. Circle it, leave it open, and go to the right. And these always remind me of signs that kind of go all different directions because on the number line, as you can see, there's going to be a gap in the middle that doesn't have a combined area. So we start with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. The first part of our compound is repeating this negative 2 to the left. And the second part is the y is greater than 1. And it goes to the right. So that's what and and or inequalities can look like. Let's go inside our foldable here and do a little bit more work on this. We're going to take a look at some written statements and see if we can recreate those written statements, whether it's an and or an or. So take a look. It says, I am thinking of a number that is greater than 8. That's an important part of this. It's greater than 8, negative 8. And it's less than or equal to 4. This is an AND statement, because this right here is what's combining them. That's what's making it compound. Yes, there's an OR in here, but that OR is part of the statement less than or equal to. It's part of that, that inequality symbol that's going to include the equal to sign. So this is definitely an AND. What would this look like? Well, it's greater than negative 8 and it's less than or equal to 4. So this would be a filled-in circle. This would be an open circle. 
and the part on the graph shaded is going to be this space here. What would the written inequality be for this? Let's do the broken apart first. x is greater than negative 8 and x is less than or equal to 4. We would write this as negative 8 is less than x and x is less than or equal to 4. This is where a compound inequality becomes a written statement. So we're looking at this piece here is this piece here. Notice that the symbol flip-flopped because although order matters with inequalities, when it's an and inequality, that x has to be in the middle of the inequality, and the statement to the left does a flip-flop. Let's try this one here. I am thinking of a number that is at most 0 or at least 2. What's the number? At most 0, at least 2. What's our word then? This is an or statement. And before we even graph it, let's write what the inequality is from the words. It is at most 0. That means that x is less than or equal to 0. At most means it's including 0, and that's the biggest that it's going to be. Or it's at least 2. Notice that or statement gets written in there. That means x is greater than or equal to 2. So to graph this, all we need to put on our very simple graph is a 0 and a 2. Both of those are going to be completed circles. This is an OR statement, so those arrows are going to shoot off in different directions. The 0 term is going to go to the left, and we would include that and the two term is going to shoot off to the right. Let's try one more here. I'm thinking of a number that is more than 0 and less than 10. More than 0 and less than 10. So let's highlight we've got more than 0 and less than 10. Is this an AND or an OR statement? We have an AND. Let's write our inequalities from the written word. More than 0 is going to show x is greater than 0. Less than 10 means, since we know this is an AND, let's write that in there, x is less than 10. So 0 is less than x. Notice we did a flip-flop here to get that x into the middle. And x is also less than 10. So we have this piece matches this one. And this piece matches this one. And how does that show up on our graph? We do a 0 and a 10. Remember, originally x is greater than 10, so it's going to circle and go to the right. The line doesn't go further than 10 because nothing in this compound inequality is greater than 10, and we're just going to circle this as well. Neither one of these has a or equal to. Okay, quick, let's try three more real quick. I'm going to speed up my pace a little bit so you can pause the video if you need to. I'm thinking of a number that is fewer than 6 or no less than, th than negative 3. That no less than is critical for us to pay attention to. This is going to end up being an or.
and we had a number that is fewer than six, so x is less than negative six. I'm sorry, I keep leaving that negative off. And the second inequality said, or no less than three, negative three. The negative sign got stuck up here. I'll just write it down here. So, or x is greater than or equal to negative three. Sorry, that was off screen a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> and let's graph real quick. I like graphing the ors, and I like seeing them because I don't have to rewrite them. It's just one less step. We're going to put negative 6 and negative 3. This is an open circle. The other is a closed circle. And our arrows go off in opposite directions. Those ors never meet. Okay, I'm thinking of a number that is less than 6 and greater than 2. What do we have here? We have an and. And over here we're going to say x is less than 6, x is greater than 2. We're going to put the x in the middle. The greater than 2 gets written the same way it is up above. But we need to do a little flip-flop on this to get the 6. And right here it's a less than symbol, so it's going to become a greater than symbol. I actually just reversed that. I should have put it the other way. Now that I'm writing this down and seeing the graph. I hate having to make corrections in my videos. This is the one that's going to get flip-flopped. So I'm going to rewrite the x here is less than 6 because on the number line the 6 is going to be to the right and the 2 is going to be to the left. So this is going to end up being a flipped symbol in the 2. Neither of these are an equal to so we just circle and draw the line in the middle. Last one, I'm thinking of a number that is less than or equal to negative 7. Come on, Elizabeth, please come to the main office. Come or on. greater than 12. Please come to the main office, thank you. We're going to end with an or, which means it's going to be a little bit easy. We don't have to rewrite it. I won't have to mess it up again. We have less than or equal to negative 7. Or x is greater than 12. Negative 7 here. 12 here, this one gets a full circle, and to the left, this one gets an open circle, and to the right. My 7 ended up kind of looking like a 2. There we go. Okay, so these are going to be pretty similar problems in the textbook. Um, there won't so much be the words as the problems, and you're going to be graphing them. This is going to get glued into your notebook. I'll take the time to glue it after I turn the camera off. But you guys can take care of that afterwards as well. And as you know, I will be back Monday with questions, but feel free to ask Mrs. Forsyth. She's good at algebra. She can help you. Last thing we did was on page 13. So I'd like you to turn and put this on page 14. We're going to title this what these are, which is compound inequalities. Again, you're going to glue this with dot, dot, not a lot, right down here. And on the left side, page 13, that's where you're going to start the practice. And hopefully you'll have enough room because I don't want you to have to do tons of these before I see you on Monday. When you get your book, I'd like you to turn to page 208. And let's try the first problem together. It's on page 208. It's number three. You can pause the video while you get a book and get there. If 
you notice, this inequality has the x in the middle. It is a compound inequality that's an and, but there's also a two with it. So we don't want to have anything with the variable. We need to isolate it. We have to take it away from the middle and the right and the left. That's going to cancel it in the middle, leaving us with negative 5 is less than x, which is also less than 5. And to graph that, as an and, you're going to put a negative 5 here, positive 5 here. These are both just less thans. Over and we don't have to worry about filling in those circles. So pretty simple there. Let me do another example that's a little bit different. Let's try number eight. I'm going to use the variable x. The book, as you see, says r. Okay, we have two different inequalities here with an or in the middle. We're going to simplify both and get the variable by itself. Oops, that, look at what I did. That should be a 1. And this one gets plus 1, plus 1. We end up with x is greater than 5. We simply graph this by putting the 1 and putting the 5 showing that this one is less than and this one is greater than. Okay, you'll have a few more practice problems like this. And then there's also some graphs and I want you to use the words that we used in our foldable to take those graphs and try to determine a written statement for them and if you can write the inequality for them. Okay, so this is 3-6 in your book. I want you guys on page 208, and I want you to try numbers 16 through 27. 16 through 27. And then to get a little practice on some review material, I want you to turn to page 210 and do the spiral review that is at the bottom of the page. And that's gonna be problems number 57 to 65. Okay, I will see you guys on Monday and bring any questions you have. And again, make sure don't get stuck, ask Mrs. Forsyth.